Hello everybody, welcome back to Fanblade. Day 3. I'm not running out of steam. In fact, I'm uh, as excited as ever. Uh, we've got a lot to get through today. Uh, going to try and get binding on the body, get that carved, get everything good there. We're going to get a truss rod slot uh, cut and fingerboard glued on there. And I want to try something that I've never tried before. I want to veneer the headstock to match the body. This is an offcut of the top, and that's the template for the headstock, and that just fits nicely. So, yeah, that'll be an interesting challenge to see if I can cut a, a thin enough strip off that to veneer the headstock, but that would be a, a lovely touch. Um, Ernie Ball once said that the difference between a good guitar and a great guitar is a hundred little details. And this is one little detail that I've omitted up until now, but I'm going to give it a go today, uh, and we'll see what happens. Um, aside from that, yeah, it's just basically uh, carving up wood, gluing things on, and making things awesome. Right, uh, so next done, it's sitting over there drying. Um, now, onto the body. This is going to get a little bit interesting. I've been uh, playing around with some scrap, trying to figure out what sort of finish I want, and I've kind of settled on this. It's a, uh, it's just an antique mahogany die, uh, which is quite good. I tried some yellow and some red and just thought, no, didn't really like that. I also tried uh, these. If anybody's... Uh, uh, lucky enough to come across these. These are furniture touch-up pens, but they're basically just wood stain in a pen. Uh, wood stain and a giant felt-tip pen. Um, and I tried out a few of these, and like they sort of worked. They worked really well, but I would need about seven packs of these to do the to colour in the entire thing. So uh, good for small touch-ups. Uh, really, really good for small touch-ups, but not good enough for not big enough for a whole instrument. Anyway big bottle of that stuff. Um, uh, we're going to uh, seal this with uh, CA glue. The final finish will be uh, super glue because I have a ton of that on hand. Um, uh, and there's also going to be binding on the body. Now when you have stain and CA and binding together, things need to go in a very specific order. Um, uh, what we're going to have to do is I'm going to have to trim the body, then I'm going to have to sand out everything, uh, get the edges of the body you know, perfectly smooth and basically ready for their final finish. 
because then I'm going to cut the binding channel but I'm not going to attach the binding at that point is when I'm going to stain it because if we attach the binding with CA glue and CA glue gets on the top then the stain won't penetrate the wood at that point uh, so we need to stain it first uh, also if you put the binding on and then stain it then you stain the binding as well and we don't want that we want that contrast there to sort of define the shape and make it look uh, just a bit classy I like I like instruments with binding on them. Uh, yeah, so that's the order of operations. Trim this, sand everything out, cut the binding channel. I'll probably carve a little bit of. Uh, we'll just give it a give it a light carve. I can't I can't put a huge uh, a huge carve on it because there's not a whole lot of material to play with. But uh, we'll give it some contouring. Then we will stain and uh, finish, and we'll get a couple of uh, coats of CA on the entire thing so it's sealed. Then we can attach the binding uh, and then hopefully put the rest of the finish on and that will, will just uh, sit how it goes. Uh, as for the pickup uh, cavities and everything else I'm going to have to do to the body, well uh, I can protect the top while I'm cutting a control cavity and uh, I would no never normally uh, cut the neck pocket anyway until the neck is finished and the pickups are basically just going to screw onto the surface. There may, might have to be a little bit, uh, a, li a very little shallow carve in there for the pickups. Uh, but on the whole, uh, we can get away with finishing this thing uh, uh, and then doing all the rest of the work to it later. It's not how I normally do it, but uh, in this situation, as I say, things have to go in a fairly specific order for this to work. So that's what we're going to do. Let's trim this and see how we go. Okay, uh, here is where we are at. Uh, the top is not completely sanded, there's still some saw marks and everything in it, but it's flat enough that I can uh, run the router across it to cut the binding channel. There are no saw marks in the, uh, uh, in the edges. That is because there's going to be a router bit with a bearing rolling along there and any little bits, any little problems, uh, is going to get cut into the binding channel. So that's perfectly smooth all the way around. Interesting, there's some knot holes that are starting to look like they're uh, going to need filling, but we'll uh, cross that bridge when we come to it. We need to drop a little bit of epoxy in there, perhaps just to fill those up. Yeah.
Right, that's my binding channel cut. Thank goodness we are done with the router. I do not like routers. Um, I've marked a line that comes to the top of the binding. That's our line to carve down to. Um, yeah, and I'm not going to do too much of a dramatic carve because I don't want to destroy the uh, sort of the, 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 the pattern on top. The way the grain goes on this side, uh, as I carve down, the grain is going to appear to curve around and come back this way. Uh, and that's fine if I'm curving around curving around to this edge of the guitar, but on the opposite edge of the guitar, it's not going to curve down and around the guitar, it's going to curve out and away from it. Uh, and that's going to look a little bit weird, so I'm not going to uh, carve any more than I absolutely have to to get a bit of a curve on that edge. I can do a little bit more on this side, which is fair enough because this is where you want some arm relief anyway. Uh, so that's good, we'll uh, carve that up and then we'll see about uh, finishing the top. Okay, looking good, we're on a little bit of a roll here, so let's carry on. The uh, next few steps are kind of strange. What the, We're currently sitting at uh, 120 grit. Uh, need to uh, rub this up to get the uh, get, get the, the soft grain we really want to, to be able to get in there and, uh, 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 and have the stain take to really accentuate these lines. And the way we're going to get into that grain is by scuffing it up with a wire brush on a drill. Um, slowly and carefully, I should add. Uh, after doing that, uh, we'll need to sand it out to 180 just to bring it up to spec for adding the finish. Then once we've added the finish, it'll need to be sanded out to 240 ready for uh, a coat or two of super glue. And at, once that's all dry, then we can add some binding. I'm not sure if we're going to get the binding on tonight. Uh, let's see how this goes. Yeah, <laughs> this is going to be either really, really awesome or my major fail at failure mode. Um, there's all lots of little holes in these knots as well, which need to be filled with something. So I think possibly we will concentrate on getting all of this right and save the binding for another day. Seems like a uh, pretty decent sort of a plan.
yeah, talk about unexpected results. The uh, wire wheel was appearing to buff the wood as it went. I can feel the grain exactly where I want it to be, and the rest of it sort of feels a little bit polished. Um, I guess it's the same principle as using wire wool to uh, or steel wool to, to, to buff something to a high shine. Not that I recommend trying to get a high shine out of this, uh, but it's definitely had a slight polishing effect. So we can skip a couple of steps and go straight on to the finish, which I'm very pleased about. For my wood dye, I will be using the Brywax Colorfast wood dye. Uh, absolutely not sponsored. Most of the time I use products because I either really like them or they are the only thing that I've got. Uh, uh, in this case, that happens to be both. <laughs> it's the only wood dye that I've got that's not water-based and uh, I happen to really like it. It's good stuff. So, gloves on. Grab a cloth. The object of the exercise, of course, to be staining right up to the edge and not over it. So, uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. It's just extraordinary, isn't it? Wow. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I'm well. <laughs> I'm a little bit amazed with that, actually. That's crazy. What's going to happen now is that I'm, we're going to let this dry, and then I'm going to sand it out to 240. Um, I'm hoping to uh, just sand it just enough to uh, bring the light parts lighter while leaving the dark parts darker. Uh, and we'll do that to 240 and then when I get it just the way I like it and might even see if I can go for a little bit of a fade a little bit of a burst effect if I can pull that off uh, but then we'll get a couple of coats of super glue on there to seal it and then that will be that uh, was hoping to get binding on today that won't be happening we'll have to do that tomorrow but uh, yes this is that is remarkable Right, super glue. Yes, now I get questions all the time about what sort of super glue to use. Um, and the truth is, uh, for, for, for this purpose, um, just your run of the mill dollar shop super glue does the trick absolutely fine. Would I trust it to hold up an elephant on a crane? Probably not. But uh, for, for just setting into some wood and finishing it, uh, it's absolutely fine. Now, uh, there are two types. There is uh, the very, very thin stuff. This is as thin as water. They call it water-thin CA glue. Comes in a variety of brands. It's just the cheap bulk stuff that you buy. I pay two dollars a bottle for this stuff. Um, there is some other stuff that I found in tubes, which is a lot thicker. Now, this stuff is great for the first coat. Soaks into the wood nice and deep. Then, once that first layer is set, the thicker stuff just goes on top and just sits there in a nice thick top coat. So that's how I use it. I use thin stuff first, thick stuff on top, uh, just builds that finish uh, and, and does a good job. Now as always with CA glue you have to be very careful. I'm wearing gloves, the door is open, the fan isn't going now but it will be when I turn the mic off. Uh, and 
uh, yeah, you do not want to uh, muck around with safety when it comes to this stuff. It will glue your eyelid to your eyeball. Think about that. I will probably come in over the course of the next few hours and put a few more coats on there. Uh, it doesn't take long to dry, about an hour uh, per coat and you're, and you're good to go. I can probably get another five or six coats on tonight while I am editing the video that you have just watched. And I will actually sign off right now by saying thank you very much for watching that video that I'm about to edit. Uh, thank you very much for subscribing. Uh, thank you very much as well for everybody who has uh, welcomed me back. Um, uh, it's nice to be back. It is nice to be building a guitar and showing you fine people how it's done. I wish I could do it more often. I, I genuinely do wish I could do this more often. Because look at that. Binding tomorrow. See you then.